ground. Yeah, I'm f- absolutely fascinated by mushrooms. I had uh, Paul Stamets on the podcast. He's, I saw, I saw my, that one. How great is that guy? That's super cool. With his mushroom hat? Yeah. That was yeah, amazing. I got one if you want one. <laughs> that's awesome. I got, he gave me two mushroom hats. Oh, that's hats. amazing. Like, what am I going to do with two? In case one breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I have an extra mushroom hat. Uh, but There's know. a really cool documentary, actually. Um, uh, it's called Know Your Mushrooms, I think. It's by Ron, better know by, by Ron Mann. And he, 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 he travels along with these mushroom hunters. Uh, up, I think a lot, a lot of it's in Oregon and up the coast of California down in New Mexico, but they're, they're professional foragers that then go and sell these mushrooms. Uh, but they track these foragers, and it's such a cool movie. That's interesting. Um, the, what I was going to say is you, you better know mushrooms because they'll fucking kill you if you don't. Well, that, that's the <laughs> thing, man. It's like, you know, what my first experiencing foraging for mushrooms, I was like an apprentice chef at this restaurant and the chef comes in and was like, hey, check these out. And I was like, whoa, like, what the hell are these? And he's like, oh, they're morels. Like I found them mountain biking. And there's this stigma, you know, like as, as a kid, like your parents are like, don't, don't eat those, don't touch those. They're poisonous. They'll kill you. And it's like, okay, well, then you just, you just have this idea. Well, mushrooms come from the grocery store. Well, it's like, no, they grow, they come in the wild. And you know, that's, that's like my thing with meat is I, I teach my kids, like meat doesn't come from the grocery store. It's not, right. it's not a styrofoam package. That's not where it comes from. It's an animal. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and it's just like, you know, mushrooms that grow in the wild and, it, they're just they're crazy they they have this like micro micro uh micro risal yeah it's yeah it's, micro risal relationship with the uh animals or with the uh the trees rather um do you know the story of the amanita muscaria uh, i know what they are uh i don't know the story the amanita muscaria is the most fascinating one to me because that's the one that looks like uh, looks like santa claus or the mario it's Kart red with white yeah. yeah that is the subject of a book by a guy named john marco allegro who was one of the head scholars uh, for deciphering the Dead Sea Scrolls. He deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls for 14 years. He was an ordained minister, but he was also, in his study of theology, became agnostic. And he sort of, when he started realizing that there was all these different religions that had similar stories, and he was, you know, found all these uh, d- different connections, and he was trying, trying to like figure out what the origins of all these stories were. Well, after studying the Dead Sea Scrolls for, I think it was 14 years before he wrote this book, he decided that all of Christianity was a massive misunderstanding. And what it was originally about was these stories, these collection of stories that were about fertility rituals and psychedelic mushroom use. <laughs> and he traced the word Jesus back to an ancient Sumerian word that was a mushroom covered in God's semen. And that when God would come on the earth, that's what rain was. Rain was God coming on the earth. And that these mushrooms would rise up out of the ground. They would eat them and trip their fucking balls off, right? <laughs> That's a crazy story. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to think. Yeah. People that were foraging for food, especially back when there was no agriculture, right? I mean, it was, it was touch and go. You, know, you could easily starve to death. You, I mean, a bad winter, you know, a drought, people would starve to death. It was very, very common. So, they would take foraging extremely serious and they knew what they could eat and they knew what they couldn't eat well they knew that there was a relationship between carnivorous trees and coniferous trees would grow these weird looking shiny red and white mushrooms under them that's what coniferous trees is pine trees that's what we use for christmas trees yeah those red and white packages they they are like the shiny packages underneath the Christmas tree. They are the color of Santa Claus. Yeah. They're common in Siberia. They're eaten constantly by caribou. Caribou are reindeer. Reindeer are addicted to these to the point where when people are having psychedelic mushroom rituals and they go outside to take a leak, the caribou will knock them over to get to the Amanita muscaria piss in the sand because they <laughs> smell the Amanita muscaria in the piss. And one of the ways these guys trip their balls off is they eat the mushroom and then they drink their own urine. They That's have a crazy. second process of this. Here's where it gets even crazier. In the times in Siberia where it would become extremely snowy, when the, the shaman would visit, the way they would get into the house is through the fucking chimney because the door would be snowed in. So they would climb in through the chimney. I mean, there's so many parallels to Santa Claus and to Christianity, to this one mushroom that they think was a, a massive part of shamanistic rituals. There it is right there. This is this Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that is that's Rudolph so crazy. the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm sure. such a cool story. <laughs> oh, dude, it's fucking crazy. So he yeah. wrote this book called The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross that was bought out by the Catholic Church. This I have to verify. 
Um, but I do know that they stopped production of it. I don't know if it was bought out by the Catholic Church. That's always been what's been told to me. But I do know that they stopped production of it forever. Um, he came out with another book called The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth, which is still available. Then, more recently, like really recently, within the last decade, uh, a guy named Jan Irvin republished um, the John Marco Allegro books with permission from his family. I think it might have actually been one of those things where when a book is over 25 years old, it becomes like public domain or something like that, too. But this this book and this this story behind it is incredibly fascinating. And what he's basically saying is that, and it makes sense, if you were living thousands of years ago and you stumbled upon these psychedelic mushrooms and you took them, you would experience God. You literally would think that that psychedelic state was you communicating with God. They would want to hide those from the Romans. So they hid them in parables and stories. And he explains what the original meaning of all these parables and stories are. Because, of course, you're going from ancient Hebrew, which is an extremely complicated language that also involves numbers. The letters are also numbers. And then that's translated to Latin and to Greek and then eventually to English. So a lot is lost in that translation. So it really takes a linguist and a, and a biblical scholar to kind of understand whether or not what this guy is saying is correct. I'm obviously not one of those, so I'm just talking <laughs> shit. But it's a... There's so many parallels. It's almost like, how could it be just coincidental that Santa Claus is red and white, that Santa Claus likes reindeers, that the Christmas tree is something that we use and the presents are under the Christmas tree, that Santa Claus lives in the fucking North Pole, which is Siberia, which is where <laughs> caribou live, and which is where these mushrooms are very common. I mean, there's so many parallels. It's really kind of fucking crazy. That's cool. Yeah, it's a great book. Anybody, I, I really highly recommend it because it's one of those books where you just gotta you read a few chapters and you gotta go. I think I may have to go back over that again. Yeah. go over yeah. it again. Cause it's so <laughs> it's it's so freaky. Very cool. But I've stumbled upon those in the wild. Those uh, Amity. See, I've never found those. And there's like those. There's like you have to cook them first. You can't eat them raw. You have to boil them. Yeah, we made tea they, out of they them. They will make you sick. Apparently, yeah. if you don't do it right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I forage more for uh, morels are my favorite. Uh, chanterelles, obviously, awesome, like awesome culinary mushroom. Uh, What's that yellow one that grows on trees? It's like a thick uh, chicken of the woods. Yes, that, that one. one's and it tastes like chicken. It is unbelievable. I heard that one's amazing. It's really funky. Uh, we found I was walking with the kids in a park downtown Toronto, and I look over and there's this massive. It's on my Instagram. Uh, massive yellow kind of looks like goo growing on this tree and it was a premature chicken of the woods and it just looked like this blob and then if if i were to leave it it would start to kind of uh, shelf out into like shelf kind of mushrooms um and so I, I left it for like a week and went back and harvested it and it's like it's like tender juicy chicken flavor it is bizarre oh that's kind of cool so yeah. y you were just like hoping nobody else saw it yeah and it was like <laughs> it was in like a really public uh park and i was like oh man like i better get this before someone else finds it <laughs> well how many people would know in a public park in toronto yeah uh, there's a few, there's, there's definitely a few. I've, I've kind of walked up to ladies like picking herbs and stuff and I was like, Hey, like, what are you doing? And they just kind of looked at me and kind of went away. They didn't yeah. want to share their knowledge with me. There it is. That, there it is. Oh, so that's the, it's bizarre, man. Look it's, at you. It's yeah. like zoo, zookeeper or zoolander. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was so pumped. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> the, the face you're making. There's another, you look like Chris D'Elia there. My, Doesn't my, he look a little like D'Elia? <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that's so cool, yeah. man. Oh, so, and there's like a little tiny one, uh, you know, below yeah. it. But, Why yeah, do they so, grow? on trees i don't know i think well that one you can see the bark is like deteriorating so again it's it's uh it's feeding off the decaying uh tree wow but yeah, that's so look the, how badass that so looks. if that if you actually go and i found ones like that too if you go and, and and harvest those they're really woody by that time and they're they're kind of a little too tough to, to oh eat. really um so, so yeah you want to you want to get them when they're kind of younger like that so is there a color change um, I, I get. I guess when they when they're older, they get a bit more orange yeah. uh, from that kind of yellow premature state. See that one where there's like yellow. Yeah, Whoa. those are like perfect. Yeah, right there is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that looks um, like almost like cauliflower. Totally. Yeah, it's really really neat. Wow. It's fascinating. You know the 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 mushroom world is is uh, super cool. Do you know they breathe air? I did not know that. They breathe air and they breathe out carbon dioxide. Yeah. They're closer to animals than they are to vegetables. That's really cool. Yeah, they're weird. Fungus is a weird thing, man. Yeah. Well, and a lot of it's like um, misunderstood. Well, I, I guess, 